Gospel according to John is a text full of image, symbols, and metaphors. So when it comes to the story of the resurrection, we should not be surprised that the text does not give us much information of the how and the mechanics. Of course, of course, we have the story of the women uh, and disciple uh, experiencing the empty tomb and the fate that comes. What caught my attention this year is Mary, a little later in the story, weeping outside the tomb. And she's all by, by herself, alone. And Mary was a follower of Jesus for quite a long time. She was a close friend. In today's term, we will call, we will say she's part of the inner circle. She was Jesus' people, among Jesus' people. But now Jesus is dead. And she stand there. She stay there. Uh, probably desiring to feel close to him. A little like us when we go to visit the tomb of our loved ones, just to feel them somehow close to us. And someone shows up, and she believes she's the gardener, and she said, well, where have you put the body? Because that's the only logical explanation for the empty tomb, the only possibility, because she cannot conceive that something else could happen. And it's only when she's called by her name that she fully understands who's standing in front of her. So Jesus, Jesus was back to life and it was such a, an exciting news for her because she thought that they would, he would and her also resume the life as it was before still talking to people, still going to the people, still proclaiming this message. But Jesus says, don't hold on to me. And that's maybe a part that we're still struggling with. That resurrection is not resuscitation. Resurrection means death. And death in the sense of letting go. And not just letting go uh, something that we don't like, letting go old junk or a very old cellular cell phone, or, but letting go something we might love deeply and to realize that it's not coming back. And with the space we create from accepting those deaths, transformation, new possibilities emerge, something that we might never have imagined before. Mary has to accept that the risen Christ was not the same than Jesus of Nazareth. Maybe you have noticed that in, in, the, in the narrative, on many occasions, the disciple who knew Jesus after the resurrection struggled to recognize him even if it's the same person, because he is different. He is, not, he is more than just coming back to life. He was transformed. And for us, believing in the resurrection or accepting the resurrection is accepting that there's a, maybe a new way to believe. Maybe there's another way to engage the world through this transformation, through letting go of things we love, but being transformed. And this transformative experience for the disciple was, was amazing for them too. Because, yes, like I said, they, they, they came to see Jesus differently and came to see their faith differently and understood that they did not need a master to call the shot where to go, how to behave. No, they took it on their themselves. And for us, well, this is a possibility for a new life, a new way to be multiple opportunities in front of us, for us, for our church, for our world. Yes, resurrection often, like Mary, 
caught us off guard because that's not what we have planned. We don't understand how it works and, and, and we, don't, uh, we don't want to let go. The challenge for us when resurrection show up in our lives is to res the possibility of resurrection shows up in our lives, sorry, is to resist the temptation to cling on what we love, to hold on what we consider normal, what we know. The challenge for us to live and understand this concept of resurrection is to open ourselves to the possibility of possibility. Well, that's all for me today. I hope you will have a very blessed Easter. And until next time, I remain Stéphane Vermette, the lectionary man, and take care of yourself. Bye-bye.